<laughs> Jeff, you you gave me some great insight when you and I first talked about the 98 team a few years ago, and it was that Arkansas game and mm -hmm. how that played out. What led up to Billy Ratliff making that play? Because you, you were kind of somewhat involved there, right? <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Well, you know, because – and I don't even talk about how the like the starting situation of whoever goes out there first or whatever. But you know, I was, was starting that year, and that it started that week in practice. I don't know. I, that was the week we had the creatine in the drink, and nobody knew it was in the drink. And I, I started cramping up. I started having issues with cramps like midweek, like Wednesday, Thursday, and it just continued into the game. Um, that was a it, that first half was tough. Anybody, if you watch the game, you remember that game. That first half was tough. And we were, we were going up against a really good offensive line and offensive line men, um, you know, that particular day. And I was just – and it started to really kick in for me again in, like, second quarter, third quarter. So that series, I that what led up to that series is, like, I could have been – for me, selfish because like wanting to stay out there, wanting to play, wanting to do whatever. But and that's the trust that we have in each other. I know I don't have to go out here and tax myself or at the expense of our team because I know there's other people that's waiting to play that's that's going to do the job as well. That's going to do the same job, do the job better, whatever the case may be. So when I started to to have issues again, I had to, they had to pull me out. I was actually I had to get I had to get an IV that game. Uh, at wow. least I had to come out. At least I came out the game maybe three, two, three times, but I had to go get an IV. And I like that series. I told Worm, I was like, "You gonna have to go." I was like, "I don't have it right now. I'm, I'm cramping. I can't move." I'm like, "You are gonna have to go." And I, I think if, if I were in the game at that time, that certainly wasn't gonna happen because I didn't have that to give. Like if you look at, because one thing that really just irks me to this day is people talk like he just tripped and. Drop the ball. That's yeah. not what happened. Like with the people that know, know, but there's some just casual folks that's like they don't understand what Billy did to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And I know at that particular point in the game and what I gone through, what I've been going through that week, I didn't have that to get. So, you know, fortunate that again, I'm not so not a selfish person and just Billy being a, the, the the talent that he is went out there and made a play. And that was just that that's just indicative of what our team was in a lot of different ways. Nobody cared about who did what, got what glory, got whatever. It was about us winning and us winning together. Like we all celebrated and that I was just as happy for him as whoever he was and everybody else. And that's just that's just what our team was. That's what made when us you're special. On your, when you're on the field, do your job. Yeah. Plain and simple. And, and, I, and, I, and I and I didn't feel like I could do my job up to the standard at the time. And I I, I knew he could. But that but that, that that goes to say like basically we had depth, yes, but we also had a rule like you could put anybody in and kind of not miss a beat. We had a lot of good yeah. players on the squad. And, and you should and never I, be out there like winded, tired playing because you knew somebody else could play. Yeah. Everybody's looking at you kind of funny. If you out there, you obviously tired or something wrong with you, and you still trying to play. It's like, man, come on, get out. You got somebody yeah. else that can play. Now we used to tell Coach sometime at halftime, "Hey, Coach, <laughs> hey man, these two guys are balling. We need them in the game at the same time. It's third, fourth. Of course, but, <laughs> but that's but that's the players knowing you. A bit. <laughs> that's right. You understand the matchup. If so, again, if somebody does, we play the same position and they got it going on and. They they got they out there they got it cooking, and it's, it's it's scheduled for me to come in right now. I was like, no nah, man, you like you, just run your hot hand until it's not running no more. Yeah. I don't need like the reps of fight. Like just keep going, and then we'll yeah. we'll work that out. So for, I mean, for those that don't know, maybe a little a little bit younger in our audience, Billy Ratliff basically blew up um, the offensive line, Brandon Burlesworth in particular, who he said had dominated the whole game. Lance yeah. Sterner tries to use the football is a crutch for some reason and he kind of lays it on the ground but one of the most memorable plays in uh Tennessee football history um Fred you and I, you and I've talked about th that play and the confidence that you guys had afterwards but it was really the confidence you had beforehand that you knew that you were going to get the ball back somehow it seemed like to every man you were going to get the ball back to T Martin who eventually handed it off to 
Travis Henry, I believe it was what, six straight times. I, I think I think there's a I don't know how everyone looks at playing the game or any game for that matter, but I look at it like this. If it's time still left on the clock, I still got a chance. Well, so if it ain't zero zero yet, I got shot. So that's my that's always been my thought process. So I hate saying people like mailing in after you know if it's you down 14 and it's two minutes left. Hey man, you, a, a few things can happen. A fumble can happen, an interception can happen, a sack in the end zone can happen. We never know. You go out here and you play till the game is over. But dudes, look at this. If you and it, I think our confidence in that moment came from earlier in that game. Because again, if you look at that first half and you look up what led up to that, they that was a tough game, man. And we weren't yeah. I'm not even going to say we weren't playing well. They were just playing better. Listen, and this they were three points, three yeah. in the second half. Yeah. 21 points in the first half, though. That's right. So we – but there was never a point in that first half where I stood over there and felt like, oh, man, we're going to lose today. I never at one point felt like we're going to lose mm-hmm. today. It was just a matter of when we're going. When are we going to figure it out mm-hmm. and when we're going to turn it on. Like, not at, I don't, we, you can't flip a switch or something like that, but we're going to figure it out at some point. To Deuce's point, like we we got way too much time on this clock to figure it out, and even if Sterner didn't fumble, right, we we still had what two timeouts? It was like three minutes left. We had that offense. We were we were going to figure something out at some point, like that. But that whole day was like that. But like, we, I never at one point felt like we were going to lose. Not at any point that day yeah. that I felt like we were going to lose. You, you kind of referred to the Al Wilson speech. Uh, it is funny how when we remember things, they get even more sensational. I was thinking when I went back and looked at that play recently, they were almost uh, like at the 15 or something. But, no, it was, it was around midfield. Yeah. And there was more time than I thought. It was thought. like three minutes. Yeah, two. We had two timeouts, three minutes. What was it, second? Was it second down? I think it was – that was second down. I think it, it was second third and six. Down. Yeah, I think it was yeah. second and six. It was second yeah. and six, so – we we get a stop there, get and I told it's like we you know, yeah of course we we like the the longer the story goes, it's like they're at the one, uh, it's ten seconds left, <laughs> yeah. like, you know how it goes. Eventually, Billy's just gonna put on a cape and fly out of Neyland Stadium. That'll be the story. He gonna you know, he gonna pick the ball up. He ran it back. <laughs> he could have if he had got his hands on the ball, he was out of there. But yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, um, Fred, anything else uh, you want to add uh, as far as? Visiting with Jeff again, our Celebrate 98 series is brought to you by Tennessee Cider Company. Uh, we'll close it out here, but... Um, I got one question to ask you for sure, though. Okay, tease it for me, because we want a message from Tennessee Cider Company. We wouldn't be here without them. How about that? Te- oh, yeah. Give me a tease, a radio I, I, tease. I you can it. do it. I, I, you want me to ask the question now? Uh, yeah. Go Give ahead. me the subject. Give them the subject line, and not the real question. Yeah. We've been talking about all these games we won and those type of things. What's the one game you wouldn't want to play again? Okay. That that is a tease. Look at my man with the broadcasting background. 